Now, do you remember when I showed you this example up here um, with this one and the one that I've just rubbed off? And we found, lo and behold, there was a solution that worked for this one and it worked simultaneously for this one. But it was somewhat coincidental that just putting in values, we found ones that lined up, okay? Um, I only went up to three, but I can really easily make for you a pair of equations and their solutions like off at 100 or something like that. You don't want to be drawing your table four, five, six, seven, eight, nine forever until you happen upon a solution, okay? So this way of solving things with a picture helps us because number one, pictures are cool. Number two, you don't have to predict where exactly the solution is going to be. The picture will tell you, okay? So to begin, let's actually just go with the values they've suggested, which is from negative two to two. I think these are the values you'll see there. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so when you have a look at the left-hand side, I'm gonna take these x values, I'm gonna substitute them in, right? So if I put in this one first, they're substituting negative 2 plus 2 gives you 0. If I substitute in 0 instead, you're just trying to redeem yourself, right? <laughs> when, you, when you substitute in 0 instead, you've got 0 plus 2, which is 2. And then the last one is going to be 4. Okay, wonderful. So what I've got here, you might have forgotten this skill. But because I can represent this as an x and a y, I can draw these on a set of axes, right? Wow. So each one of these is a point. This guy over here, negative 2 and 0, I will write like that. There's one of the points. 0, 2, here's another one of the points. And then lastly, 2, 4. Okay? So in a minute, I'm going to draw a Cartesian plane. I want to make sure however far I draw, I can at least draw these guys. Last thing, I'm going to do um, these guys over here. If I put in negative 2 again, but to a different equation, what's 2 times negative 2? Negative 4. Negative 4. Then you take away 1. Negative 5. Then you go even further negative, right? Negative 5. You put in 0, you're going to get negative 1. You put in 2, you're going to get... Very good. Okay. Positive 3? Positive 3. Okay. So again, just like with this table, each of these gives me a point. An x and a y gives me coordinates, right? Or rather, they are coordinates. So this is negative 2, negative 5. This is 0, negative 1. And this is 2, 3. OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my Cartesian plane. And I just want to make sure it's big enough that I can fit all six of these points on. OK, so let's do that. OK, now as you're doing that, let me give you a bit of a practical tip. Have a look at what I've done. In fact, just put your pens down for a brief second because um, this way I will find, I think I find this practically very helpful when I do it. So I want you all to see this because it'll save you a lot of trouble in the future. Okay. Pens down, just have a look at what I've got on the board so far. The first thing you'll notice is I have drawn um, my cartridge plane nice and symmetrical. It hasn't just started from here and gone that way. Now, hold on. The reason why I knew to do that is because the width of the Cartesian plane comes from these values. Do you see that? X's are about horizontal values. And I'm going to go from negative 2 to 2. That's symmetrical, isn't it? Do you see that? If I were going from 0 to 10, it would be different. If I was going from negative 8 to 0, it would be different again. Right? So judge off these numbers. Secondly, what I've done is um, these three X's that I put onto the graph, right? What, what are they? What do they represent? The I'm, I'm talking about these guys. The One, points. two, three. They're the points. Very good, right? They're the first three points I had here. One, two, three. Okay. Now, I'm going to join them up in a minute. They're going to give me a line. But I'm going to have other points. And I don't want to confuse which line's which. So I tend to draw one with X's. And then I tend to draw the other one with, uh, you're not wise, um, I tend to draw them with pluses. It's just enough so they look similar, but I can tell them apart. Okay. So I've got negative 2, negative 5 is all the way down 2, 4, 5 down here. Uh, negative 1 is here. And Okay. All right. Now that I've got all the points on there, you can actually see the three points you've got for each of these different equations, they join together to make a line. This should ring a few bells from AM2 
when we did what were those relationships called? Linear, Linear relationships wow. because they're in a line. Okay, so I'm going to join up the dots. Now, usually I say when I'm drawing diagrams, usually I'm at an advantage because it's easier to draw. I know it's more time consuming, but it's easier to draw huge diagrams. It's just like it's easier to draw like huge circles and make them look vaguely circular. Whereas on your page, it's like impossible, right? However, in this instance, for this job, you guys are at a much bigger advantage to me because on almost everyone's pages, well, you have a grid. Okay? Now, remember I told you that what I was looking for was a solution that works for both of them. Okay? Now, put your pens down for a second. Yeah, okay. This is a big, big idea. So I just need you to have your pens down for a second. Remember I told you that each of these, each of these, right? is a solution for this guy, right? It's a pair of numbers that makes the equation work. But there's lots of other solutions apart from the ones that I've written, right? Like there's ones that go further that way and ones that go further that way. By the way, that's why I have arrows, right? There are still more and more solutions. And um, there are solutions between these solutions, right? Which is why even though one's here and one's here, I've got all these ones in between. Does that make sense? Like I've literally drawn in between them. So every point on this line, right? Here's one, here's another one, here's another one. Every single point I can pick out there is a solution for him, right? In the same way, every point on this line, and by the way, um, if you've drawn these, why don't you label them with me? This is y equals x plus two, and this is y equals two x minus one. Every point on this line is a solution to this equation. So remember, I wanted a point that solves both of them at the same time. I need a point that's on both lines at the same time. And there's only one. Can you see it? It's this guy. Right here. Okay. So I want you to label this. I want you to label this. And I want you to say, this guy here solves both equations. Okay. In other words, he solves the equations simultaneously. Okay. Now, remember I said you're an advantage to me because you have a grid in front of you. I'm just doing my best trying to read off here. Okay. Now, I've been roughly close. If I draw this all the way down here, right? on yours, you should see it should bang on if you've actually drawn with the rule and that kind of thing. You should find that that's three. should be able to find that that's three. This is two, just to the left of it. Okay. And in the same way, if you draw a line over here, um, you should find that that's five. Mine's a little bit off, right? I did the best I could. Wait, why should it be three? Ah, okay. So there's two reasons why. The first one is if you've drawn them accurately, they, they have no choice. They have to meet up there, right? Correct. Um, but secondly, I can know, like, if your diagram is like mine, it's a little bit shonky, you're like, not that trustworthy. Just test it out, right? Let's have a look. If I put in, just put on the side here. If I put in x equals three, what y value are you going to get out of here? Three plus two, which is. What about this one? If I put x equals three into here, two times three is six, and six take away one is. And as you can see, it solves both simultaneously. Does that make sense? 